It's, it's the most gambly of all decks, I would say. Mm. So that's why, you know, if you're in a competitive environment, right? You're trying to play for money. You want to win. You don't want to take that gamble. And then on the part of this underwear, Blood Bat was banned. So there are two decks that uh, underwear is going to rely on is Mid Shadow and Neutral Rune. And for Jay-Z, it's going to be Mid Shadow and Haven Aegis. So let's see how this will play out. How do the mulligans look? And what do you guys feel about these particular matchups here? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm interested in to know your thoughts about this matchup, mid shadow versus neutral uh, rune. Do you know? Do you know much about this matchup? Uh, whoa, was that a shadow reaper? It's a shadow reaper. It is. Um, it is a shadow reaper. <laughs> Hark, and it's I like to return. say that mid shadow has a good or okay matchup against everything. So that's fair. I would say neutral rune is uh, again, like I said at the beginning of the the stream here, that I think it's still one of the strongest decks. But mid shadow is on that same tier. I'm not really sure how good shadow reaper is now. This is the first time I've seen it in a while. But maybe this is a more aggressively minded mm -hmm. uh, shadow deck and not mid shadow. He's got the skeleton fighter over there. He's got the the reaper and the phantom house serb. So he's he's going for the turn six win plays. I like it. Yeah, I mean, even if you are, I, I was going to say this, like, even if you are going for the aggressive game plan, Shadow Reaper is just such a dead card sometimes, and he actually opts to play Bone Chimera over it, because it's now on the same play, it's on the same play point curve. Like, Bone Chimera mm -hmm. is just better, usually. Next turn, it does open him up for the Shadow Reaper plus the Skeleton Fighter play, which is not bad, it keeps the board mm -hmm. wide. I'm talking about Underwear's hand a little bit. Underwear has a great hand here. He's got a sweet curve into either a Felice or a Hector. Um, whatever he wants to do that turn, depending on uh, if Hector does get active or not. Uh, this is looking a lot more good for Underwear at the moment. We see Shadow Reaper. It's only going to come down and give buff once, though. One of these Skeletons will probably evolve over Unica, and then Skeleton Fighter will come down, but Underwear could just not trade. Wait for it to come out of stealth and shoot it down with Hector, probably. That's true. Let's see what he does. Like, they're, these are both big threats to his game plan right now. Unica will put him back up to full health, but Fairy could present a board that might be too big to overcome. So he's got a real choice to make here. Goes for the Fairy instead. Doesn't care about the two extra health. Cares more about the buff you just mentioned. Oh, Alice, so that would have been online. huge. Yeah. That would have been amazing. Why is Merman Alice evolve Fairy I go face? Oh my gosh. Might have been a bit too dangerous, but, you know, either way. A little dangerous. <laughs> yeah, a little more on the dangerous side. But this is, this is, again, a more aggressive shadow deck, and I can't imagine that Underwear, after playing these early turns, doesn't imagine that. So he's, he's really got to think, do I want to be the defensive player here, or do I want to be pushing... And specifically when you see a Shadow Reaper that you can't deal with, maybe you wait until that's off the board before you decide to, to flip the switch to aggressive mode. Mm-hmm. And Underwear is being put into a position that players haven't been put into in a while, and that also might be one of the reasons uh, Jay-Z is playing the Reapers, because people may have just forgotten how to play against the Reaper. Trades are going to happen no matter what, though. So... The That's trick true. with Shadow and Reaper it, is if your opponent already has the creatures, you should just kill them on your turn. You don't want them to play the card we just saw Jay-Z draw. Exactly. Yeah. Prince Catacomb uh, really really is nice before Shadow Reaper comes out of Ambush, but uh, still might lend mm -hmm. itself here. It might go with the Cerberus plan just to set up for the Phantom Howl. Uh, but we'll see right. here. And for those of you who don't know, just like a quick little uh, uh, history lesson on Shadow Reaper. Shadow Reaper used to cost two, it now costs three. And what it does is it's just a very unassuming 1-1 one, one ambush follower that whenever a unit dies on your side of the board, it gets plus one, plus one. So it, it basically makes trading very favorable, and it can still push damage regardless of what the board state looks like. So it's a very powerful card that got nerfed to three play points, and we haven't seen it until today. It used to very frequently get to, like, 9 attack the turn after it was played, <laughs> because Catacombs <laughs> yeah. was also at 3, so you could just flood the board with skeletons and then evolve it. Uh, but those those days of terror are gone. It's still going to get in for a nice uh, chip of 5, though. It's not bad for a 3-drop. That's right. This is, this is a pretty scary board. Felice can't even really deal with both of these. Which is which is not common for a shadow board. 
Police can usually clear up pretty much everything, but that 5-5, five, five, a little too big. Mm-hmm. Almost. Oh, actually, never it's mind. Only wise oh, no, mermaid. wise mermaid can't. Yeah, wise mermaid can't. Can't, can't buff her. <laughs> can't buff Felice. Yeah. yeah. If only. If only. Wise mermaid, good, but not that good. Only buffs neutrals. Darn. And again, just Enjoy for a quick word. little history lesson... Uh, for, for people who didn't know, Prince Catacomb, what uh, Envy was just talking about, used to cost 3, now cost 4. And what it does is it, it basically comes into play as a 1-1. One, one. It makes all of your followers, including itself, when they die, you get another 1-1. One, one. So it sets up for that Shadow Reaper interplay uh, over a few turns, which makes it super, super big. But both of them being nerfed means it's a lot slower now. It reminds us all that skeletons are hiding inside... Angel of the Word onto uh, Cerberus into Evolving into Wise Merman on the Angel gives you 5 attack, but you can't do that because killing the Cerberus with the Angel will buff the Reaper to a 6-6 six, six and prevent you from doing that. That's right. Very hard interaction to deal with. And Jay-Z is actually running away with a card that, you know, people have stopped playing. They've, they've said this card is bad, and here it is! It can evolve for 8 damage next turn if he wants to. It won't, that but... pre-evo... a little strange to me. On the Angel of the Word. That was interesting. I think he just wanted to make sure that Mimi couldn't snipe it off the board for free. Because if he goes... That if Jay-Z were to have played another Cerberus into that Mimi, it would have been game, I think. So... That's true. Plus, he needs to keep followers in place so that he can actually eventually deal with the Shadow Reaper that's gotten so big. Mm -hmm. Started as a 1-1, one, one, now 6-6. Six, six. Started from the bottom, now we're here. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I was actually going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This Reaper only right, continues so... to get more and more out of control, too. So That's right. I think we might actually see... I don't know, he might want to push with the with the Mimi damage, but he can always save it because he has the Phantom Hell backup. He might just want to present a big board here because Ektar is an option next turn. I kind of like the Lyrial into uh, Prince Catacomb play here. I do as well. You don't get to kill the uh, the Angel of the Word, but... I mean, you do have a 6-6 six, six on the board. You could just ignore it. Yeah, I, and I think that's what he's going to go with. He's just going to ignore it. His, his hand is ridiculous. He's, he has this huge Shadow Reaper that's not been able to dealt, uh, be dealt with by Underwear's hand here. He's got Ektar for a follow-up, and he's got Phantom Howl plus Mimi Coco for a follow-up after that. So this is looking pretty mm -hmm. cut and dry right now because Underwear doesn't have any defensive options. Exactly. Jay-Z's got, uh, got the attack from both angles. <laughs> if, uh, if the board mm -hmm. is wiped, he gets the skeletons from Catacombs to be buffed by Ekter. And if that all somehow gets banished or something by a pre-nerf lightning blast on 7, then he has the Phantom Hal Coco Mimi. He would need... No, that'd be 9 damage. Yeah, that would just be lethal. He just has lethal set up, no matter what happens here. Right. Straightforward game. Shadow Reaper showing its power, basically saying, put me back in your deck. What the heck have you been thinking? <laughs> It's interesting. Shadow Reaper Catacombs is something that, you know, we haven't seen for a very long time, but I mean, it looked very, very, very uh, textbook for Jay-Z right there, putting uh, putting underwear in that checkmate situation. Mm -hmm. Jay-Z looking calm and collected, almost bored. <laughs> it's like, you know what? I build this deck. This deck is great. I'm winning. I mean, winning with Shadow Reaper used to be pretty boring because, like I said, it could get, like, <laughs> a true. possible... It could get, like, 9 attack in 2 turns, which was, you know... The worst the thing was, used like, to get a out Bone Chimera turn into, like, double Shadow Reaper. So you have, like, two of the pumps going oh, at the same God. time. That was ludicrous. That was just this value. Side Games, how do I hold all this value? Side Games is like, we got you, fam. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll make sure this <laughs> can't happen anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Game number two, Haven versus Shadow. Mm. An age-old matchup. Now, Banish is very nice against Shadow because, again, as we've talked about in previous casts, Shadow relies a lot on Shadows, the mechanic that when a follower dies or whenever a card from your hand goes to the graveyard, you get a Shadow. And then it uses those Shadows for a little Soul Squasher, Demon Lord Ektar, those types of things. And Haven has a lot of ways to get rid of those Shadows 
in black and scripture priest of the cudgel which we've seen from the last games mm -hmm. banishment will not only deny the shadows but it's also really good against the uh the two for one or multi shadow cards like skull beast when it dies gives you two shadows uh bone chimera when it dies gives you three prince catacombs you know anything really that dies infinite. from multiple shadows <laughs> infinite yeah. Banish is just great. Yeah, you could banish yep. a Minth, I guess. Oh, man. If we see more Minth Tyrant shenanigans today, I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to be like, what, <laughs> what hell it's did not all these guys it's take? The way it should be played, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Minth is all the right. best four drop of the game. You heard it here first. So we see Underwear with not uh, not an aggressive shadow deck. More, more along the lines <laughs> of the mid shadows that we've seen. He's playing, uh, I wouldn't call it the opposite of Shadow Reaper aggro, because that would probably be like Nephthys or something, but he's playing a much yeah. different strategy with Lurching Corpse, Soul Squasher, Thane, you know, actual removal spells outside of Zombie Party. You know, looking for a, right. uh, a slower game, for sure. Which definitely aids, uh, aids Haven a little bit. Like, the more aggressive style decks have a tendency to be able to push through what Haven can do just because it's really slow in what it does. Uh, but mid shadow, a little bit slower, allows Haven to give uh, Haven to have a little bit more turns. Exo, so can you tell me why he might be playing Execution in Haven? Yeah, Execution is generally there as an anti-dragon measure. If you feel like a lot of your opponents okay. are going to be playing Dragon and Polyphonic Roar or something, mm -hmm. then you really need an answer because Polyphonic Roar literally just shuts Haven out. Polyphonic Roar, for those of you who don't know, is the Dragon Amulet that's nine play points that puts a five-five Storm into play every turn. Haven doesn't have an amulet removal, so it needs one if it wants to try to beat Dragon, or if it wants to be prepared to beat Polyphonic Roar. That's that's really it. I can't really imagine anything else. Bahamut also, as well. Underwear goes for okay. a really aggressive evolve there, too, pre-evolving that Lurching Corpse. He's like, I don't want to get multi-banished here. I don't want Priest of the Cudgel to just yeah. blow me out. So. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was literally what he was dodging, for sure. The Aria was popping this turn, but I don't think I don't think Underwear cared too much about that. He also might be no. trying to incentivize uh, Jay-Z into uh, attacking or banishing that certain Lurching Corpse. Although his hand doesn't really, doesn't really uh, portray that, convey that, really. Yeah. Well, his hand's just really bad. Like, Underwear has the top end of his curve, and his mid-game is just missing. So, he's at kind of an extreme disadvantage here, because he's not getting early damage in, and realistically, Jay-Z could just clear this up and not care. He could just Evo the Tiger and run the bird into these Lurching Corpses, and just not care about what Underwear's doing. Well, if he does it that way, there's a 50% chance it doesn't work. But if you banish one of them, it will. So Jay-Z really thinking about this one. He does just have Themis next turn. He could just not care. He lets it happen. He's going to have the Angel of the Word into Black and Scripture. Ooh, Execution. Onto okay. the Evolve Lurching. That's, that's actually the best use I think he could have gotten this game out of that card. Right on curve. <laughs> that was the only follower in play. Wow, we even see Underwear, he's, his hand is so bad, he draws that soul conversion and just tributes Lyriel to it immediately. <laughs> yeah, immediately. And his hand gets no he's better like, for you know it. what? Lyriel, get out of here. I need better stuff. Come on. His hand actually got no better. He just redrew a Lyriel and a Skull Beast. Well, is Skull Beast going to warrant a removal spell? I don't think so. I don't think so either. You do banish that extra shadow, like I mentioned, but it's not like you're keeping uh, Underwear off of six. If Death's Breath were to happen, he already has the triggers for that, so. And still not a great turn. He could do the Lyrial Dark Conjurer combo, which is, uh, which is a nice little tempo play. He gets to basically deal two extra damage with that Evo because Lyrial gets the one damage, as we know. Dark Conjurer gets an extra 1-1 with Storm if you have an Evolved Follower in play. So he could go for that just to push a little damage, clear up board here. Can't really see anything else for him to do. He's also getting slapped by Tribunal next turn, though. Mm-hmm. And as we all know, that like has a magnet for Evolved Followers, so... <laughs> it does. 
Decides not to Evo here. Okay, just wants to set up a board mm -hmm. for possibly Akhtar thing. Uh, Snow White's actually the perfect draw for that. Yeah, I like it. Like I, I would have much Themis. preferred to see wow. Snow White Evo here. Yeah, save the mm -hmm. save the Evo, save the Themis decrees for turn seven plus. But of course, he's gonna back up. That does open him right up to Thane, though. I mean, that Themis, and he's got another one. But if you Themis again, then yeah, he's got a Themis here. I, I, I like again. I much more would have seen the Snow White the previous turn. This way, you would have had two Themises for post turn seven. But as it stands, he has a curate to gain life back. He has a Bahamut to clear out a big board again after this Themis. So he's got a lot of options. True. He is technically holding three Themises, kind of, if you want to get really technical. If it makes it to ten. Sure. He could just Themis this board. He could go for Snow White Evolve into uh, Black and Scripture to deny the White King, but I think that's what he's going for. I like this. Especially if he expects something like an Ektar to come out, he's still saving that Themis for it, so... Mm -hmm. And the order of attack doesn't really matter here, you plan to banish that so the Spartoys, uh, or the Whites, won't trigger. Mm -hmm. So now it's really just top deck mode. Underwear's like, can I get the damage in before Ooh. something like an Igus comes out? Phantom Hell is pretty good, though. He goes for the Aether. That's going to push... He could make it uh, a total of six. 100% making the six. Yeah. He's not going to have very many windows to deal damage this game. He needs to take them. Mm -hmm. For sure. Themis will take care of this pretty, uh, pretty easily, though. And if you guys uh, that are just new to this or just watching that are like, why the heck did that card do so much? Because Ektar does a lot of things. For every three shadows, you get a 2-2, and all of your followers get plus 2, plus 0, and rush. So the newly minted ones become 4-2s that can attack, and the cards already in play get an extra 2 attack to go to face. Mm-hmm. Goes for the newly drawn Swan into a Soul Squasher, putting Jay-Z at 8. Save the Evolve. Bahamut's not playable this turn. He has to play Curate and Evolve here, or he dies. Never mind. No, Bahamut is playable here, Phantom right? Hell's... Yeah, yeah. Fan... yeah. No, Phantom yeah, Phantom Hell's, Hell's seven. only seven with the... I'm so used to Coco Mimi combos. <laughs> so unless he draws uh, yeah. Cerberus. Bone Chimera. Dun dun dun. So this Bahamut, unless Underwear wants to evolve the Bone Chimera into the Bahamut for whatever reason. I don't that that can't be the right play. <laughs> Um, to try to put two followers no, in play no to way. prevent Bahamut from attacking. This Bahamut's getting in for a ton right now. This game is looking pretty won't... over. Yeah, it won't one shot, but I think realistically the Curate just closes things harder than Bahamut. Right. Curate gaining life, the Bahamut just a big force that Underwear has no answer to at the moment. Mm hmm. That's so unfortunate. I'm Daisy's so used saying. to Coco maybe buffing it. Yeah. You don't even count it as 5 damage anymore, you're just like, that's 11, whatever. Yeah, it's just, you know, no board, he's got an evolve, 11 damage. Easy. <laughs> Easy peasy. So Underwear's really gotta decide. I think his best avenue to victory here, honestly, is to just Phantom Howl, and then pray that he top decks and do something that can kill. So, like, I would go Phantom Howl, evolve, put Jay-Z to 1, and hope you top deck another Phantom Howl or a Serve or something, and that looks like what he's gonna do. Unfortunately well, for him, we know. I was just gonna say right, that we know Jay-Z has Phantom the Phantom not enough. Yeah. Yeah, not not past the curate, no. But with with imperfect information that Underwear is working with, this is the best play, I believe. True. Phantom Hell also important to note will only summon four ghosts if he draws one. Since those ghosts all banish themselves. So he didn't get those shadows back. Yep. Slaps down Curate mm -hmm. so fast. So fast, he's like, I'm not I'm not doing that. You're not gonna double Phantom Help me, bro. And that's that. Uh, Jay-Z taking of. this one. Very well played by Jay-Z. Uh honestly Astra, underwear. That's the I, you know, attack. Nice. <laughs> it's so good. The big beam. 
Underwear just not getting the cards he needed in the mid game to even push any sort of damage. Unfortunate. Jay Z two zero over Underwear.